Hi everyone, my name is Rafael. I'm here on behalf of Health Information Management and today we'll be going over reviewing the MAR and its maintenance. So before we get started with the review of the MAR, I'm going to go over some um, beginning things in, in order to make sure that the workflow is seamless. So one of the first things that I want to point you towards is at the bottom left here. So you see that it says online and something that I want to uh, refer to is that we do have from time to time programs mentioning that they have issues with syncing and even from you, the nursing or the supervisor standpoint um, you also may have these issues um, when it comes to either reviewing meds and just making sure that what you're seeing is what your AMAP uh, or DSP is seeing. So essentially what I'm going to just kind of just walk you through is if you ever see this you want to make sure that it's turned off. So to do so you go to admin options and you want to uncheck enable Medisure on this computer and then just make sure that download emergency Mars this computer is checked off. You're going to hit save. You'll have this message appear. You'll hit OK and you'll need to restart quick Mar. So we'll close out. And just another thing to mention, you guys are all corporate users. All that really means is that you have access to all of the facilities that are currently live and you're always able to switch between them at any point. All right, so now I've logged back in. You, do, you see that the online is no longer there. That's what we want. And now you can proceed with, in this case, uh, reviewing the orders. So when you go to residence slash orders, and you'll be brought to this screen. So when it comes to reviewing orders, you want to look out for flags. Flags you'll see, and there's different types of them that you need to be aware of. You have your green flags, your red flags, and your, and your yellow flags. With your green flags, and I'm going to click on Gregory in this case, your green flags let you know that there is a new order to be reviewed. Green and red are essentially the, mean the same thing. The only difference between them is that green is already to review, all the administration times are there, and it's ready to go. But one thing that we do want to caution you on is you still want to review it in its entirety. What I mean by that is that the script is correct from what uh, the pharmacy or even the physician completed, and that the administration times are correct. So in this case, again, just making sure that all the, uh, the times match with what the instructions say and that they also match what was previously being done. So before I even get into that, though, I'm going to switch over to Andrew here. And just go through this order right now. So again, this flag here in yellow means that the order has been sent in with a particular DC time. We see here that the DC time is set for 928 at midnight. Um, however, because it was never approved, it's still going to show up on the MAR. In order, for, uh, in, a, in order to fall off the MAR or in order for it to show up on the MAR, it needs to be approved by either the management team or by the nursing team. So now that we've reviewed the flags, we're going to go over um, the start times and end times. Something to also keep in mind, the pharmacy is importing meds every morning and every afternoon. So whether it's again the supervisor or the nursing team, it's important for you to be able to work in tandem to make sure that you're reviewing these orders when you have the ability to do so. So not leaving an order or not leaving uh, the quick mar review of the meds for every few days it could just pile up and it's also important that when orders that need to be on the MAR get approved in a timely manner. So with that said now we'll just go over into the end date here. So again whenever you're reviewing the uh, the MAR again it's imported by the pharmacy with a particular time but at times it may come in over the weekend you may not be able to review it the day that it comes in so what you want to do is you first want to adjust the end date. So to do so, you're going to click on this pencil icon, 
and it'll now adjust it from 9 28 2023 and before it was saying 12 a.m and now we're seeing 12 p.m and all you would have to do is hit approve one thing before you move on to the um, the new order that just came in, you also just want to pay attention to the previous administration time. So this one was being given with the 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. administration time. You would most likely want to keep that administration time unless there's a, a specific order that's given that it's either changing to one administration time or something that you know that may be changing. But if not, again, you can keep it in mind. And now we move on to the new order. So the first thing that, uh, again, that we're going to go over is that you also are adjusting the start time. So again, clicking on this, and now it's adjusting to 928 at 12 p.m. The reason that we're uh, adjusting the start time and also the end time for the recently dc med is you want to make sure that there's continuity. Sometimes um, the orders typically are put in with an end date of 2033. So if you're not careful about ending the previous order before starting the new one, you'll then have a medication show up twice in the MAR and then again if the AMAPs aren't careful with this they will look like the the resident will look like they're being double dosed so again just be mindful of that when you're DCing and approving medications so once you have corrected the start time and end time you want to you want to come now to the instructions so again the instructions say to use daily with insulin pen however if as a nurse you feel that this these instructions are not clear enough, you're always able to override with this feature here. It'll light up, and then again, anything that you'd like to add, feel free to add it there. As a supervisor, again, you may not, um, due to the fact that you are not a medical professional, you may have to consult with either the nurse. If, there's, if your immediate nurse is not available, reach out to the supervisor and keep going up the chain until you are able to get in touch with someone. Once they give you the particular instructions that need to be made, on top of entering them here, there is also a notepad that says add note. Here is where you'll put, in, you know, let's say that you spoke to RN Connie, for example, just to make sure that, again, there are some notes there to let anyone else that's reviewing this know who, um, who gave you the authorization to put in these instructions. From there, we're now gonna move down to the time. So as I mentioned previously, the times that we saw on the old medication was 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. However, this medication, although it has a green flag, the administration time is not correct. So all you'll do here is enter the 7 a.m. time and adjust that there. If the quantity needs to be adjusted, you can, use, you can do so here and then the details. So again, although this says daily, you can always go in here to change it to the days of the week Monday or Wednesday, as well as Friday. If it needs to be given, let's say, every 14 days, you can do so. And you wanna just be mindful of the last time that it was administered. So if it was just administered this past Monday, you wanna make sure that you're adjusting that. That way it starts on the 25th, and then the next time it's supposed to be administered will be two weeks as of Monday, and not two weeks as of the 28th, which was the default. You're always able to add any additional administration times as needed and as well as remove. The default is always for it to become a routine medication, but if let's say this would be a PRN, you can just change it to that. So moving on from here, we're just going to go up top to these items. So record, if it's the case that there is a medication that needs, let's say, a blood pressure recorded, pulse, so on and so forth, you'd be able to add as many vitals that needed to be recorded to this particular medication. Again, there also is the ability for you just to add a, let's say, a weekly weight or a weekly recording of a particular vital. But in this case, in this scenario, you'd be adding that vital and attaching it to that particular medication. And if it's the case that you ever, let's say, need to add any instructions here, so that way the AMAP is aware of 
what needs to be done if let's say the systolic BP is over a certain amount or below a certain uh, amount you can add that there the same thing for the pulse etc from here we also have the ability to add a controlled drug we're trying to make sure that everything is moved on to uh, electronic and that includes the signing of the double signature on paper so in order to transition into this we're making sure that the team members are using this control drug which would require during the med pass a amap to receive a a co-signature from anyone else whether it's an amap whether it's a non-amap again you can also use a supervisor or, or an rn to help and co-sign there in the case that you have a controlled drug you would also need to come back into this record feature and insert the blister card remaining so during the med pass it'll come up and you'll be able to as the amap or the nurse or the supervisor enter the remaining blister card for that particular medication and again don't forget to click off the controlled drug the last item here, if your house applies, click on given by and if the resident self-administers medications, you can click on that and this way you can continue doing what you do on paper. The only other thing is that in this case during the med pass, their, all their medications would already be grayed out. So that really is reviewing the the MAR, so again, looking out for the start times, the end time, adjusting the instructions, adding times, changing quantities, changing details. One thing to keep in mind is that once a medication is administered more than three times, it locks. And what I mean by that, I'm going to go to a medication that has already been active. You'll see here that this lock appears and it says this order has already been administered several times. You can no longer make changes. So the changes being you can no longer change just this medication from a routine to a PRN. If let's say this is supposed to be administered three times, you can no longer add it like you saw before. And the other thing that you would not be able to change is the frequency. So again, if it's supposed to be given every other day or certain days during the week, you wouldn't be able to do that because again, after being administered more than three times, it locks. However, you are always able to change the times. You are able to change quantities, change instructions, add any vitals, and so on. In the case that you need to have these unlocked, you need to add another administration time, you would need to reach out to QuickMar support. We at uh, the Health Information Management um, on our side, we wouldn't be able to make any changes. So you would need to reach out to QuickMar at 1-877-722-2431. That number again is 1-877-722-2431. From there, you'll be asked to provide your facility ID, which is located at the top left-hand side of the facility you're in. The same thing, if you ever go here to the switch facility, you would be able to look at any facility here and the first column shows you what the facility ID, it's a five digit number. So if you ever need to reference another facility, you can always just do so there. In the case, one thing that I wanted to mention before going down here, once you have actually finished this entire section and you go to save, if you have not selected a route, which can be done by the advanced tab, the system will tell you that you have not selected one. So you'll go here to route and just select the type overall. If none of the options here apply, you can always just go to other. And again from there, once you finish that, then you'll be able to come back here to approve. Something that we've noticed is that at times supervisors of the nursing team will hit save but won't hit approve. And unless you hit approve, the medication won't appear on the MAR. So just something to kind of be mindful of. So once you have finished completing, let's say, the reviews for Andrew in this case, you would need to make sure that there are no more flags here. 
If you continue to see flags, it means that there's something that still hasn't been reviewed. And then the very last thing before we go down here is that you also have the ability to add medications manually. To do so, you're going to go here to add, you go to medication, and you'll enter the medication name, or if let's say it's an over-the-counter, you can go ahead and enter it there, you'll put in the strength, and you'll follow everything else as needed. In this case, this may be a PRN, but if let's say um, they have a medication that's only going to be administered for a week, you can start it today as of noon, and then you can end it a week from now at 12 o'clock. That way you don't have to go back in to DC it, it'll just fall off the MAR next week after 12 o'clock. You'll add your instructions as you typically would. You would add your administration times, whatever they may be. If there needs to be a vital that needs to be recorded, you can do so there. And anything else that we previously went over, making sure that you don't leave the route unselected. So I'm going to just use oral in this case. And then you would hit save, and then it would appear on the MAR. All right. So moving back to what I had previously mentioned about these last items down here. In the case that you ever need to know who may have made the previous change or made the last change, you can use the change log feature here. It'll tell you the date that something was changed, who it was changed by. So in this case, it tells you that there was imported data by CenterReach, which is the pharmacy. Again, in this case, it'll tell you that on July 12th, there was a change made by Savannah and in this case, it tells you exactly that the route went from null being empty to having oral selected. Or even the times, if they are ever changed, you can always use this audit feature to, to see exactly who may have made those changes. From here, we're going to go to suspend hold. So if, let's say, there's a resident that's getting blood work done the next morning, you can go into here and suspend and hold an order. So we can say that tomorrow morning, this resident's starting at 5 o'clock all the way until the tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We'll either have just this particular order held, all of the orders, or multiple of the orders held. And you can go ahead and select any of those. And the notes that you would just put in here for doctor's orders, and then hit save. And then the last feature, again, this is more so as an audit. If you ever need to see who may have administered the last medication, this is the schedule, this is the actual time it was administered, and this was the caregiver. If there's ever any rec um, recorded exceptions, you would see here resident refused, and if there's any notes there, they would add them. If anyone ever tells you that they made a mistake and administered a medication when it actually should have been entered as an exception or vice versa, you can always go into this view edit feature. You'll go to edit. And again, if let's say you need to add an exception because the resident refused, you can put that there that they were out of the facility. The same thing goes if they actually entered it as an exception but meant to say that it was passed. You could remove the exception and always add a note saying that it was given on time, syncing issues occurred. And then you would hit save. And that really does it for reviewing medications. If you ever have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to the Health Information Management Team, or you can also reach out to QuickMar Support to the number that I provided. Thank you and stay tuned for other trainings.